Sven Richter is head of frontier markets at Renaissance Asset Management in Johannesburg. He oversees $100 million and will launch a new frontier fund in 2012. Sven, good to talk to you. So let me start by asking about uh, the extent of your exposure in Egypt and whether or not you are you have continued to maintain maintain it. And um, we have maintained exposure in Egypt. Egypt's looking very interesting at the moment. Um, if you have a look at valuations, a little bit cheaper than the rest of the emerging markets. And if you look at how the market has declined, it's really declined pretty much in line with other emerging markets, which has not been driven so much by emerging markets, but by concerns from developed markets, specifically the, the crisis in the Eurozone. So basically you're saying that when we look at where Egypt is right now, actually the declines in the markets there have more to do with the macro uh, global growth situation as opposed to the specific political risks in that country right now? Yes, exactly. You know, if you see from sort of um, about four months ago, the markets have come down in general across emerging markets by around 25% whereas in Egypt it's come down by just under 30 percent. So, so looking at that, you can see that while there has been a little bit of concern about Egypt, and I think most of it is driven not so much by the politics at the moment, but that some of the companies' shorter-term results have come out in the last three and six months. You've seen that there's been a little bit of weakness there. Companies have battled to really produce top-notch results given so much uncertainty in the environment at the moment. But when we look forward and we look at the prospects of Egypt, we look at their tourism, the, um, the, the canal receipts, um, all of these opportunities that they have, we think that this can come back quite strongly next year. We're obviously looking for some sort of resolve in terms of the political situation, and while today is very interesting for us, it's only the start of that process, and we'd like to see how this unfolds over the next three months. But the companies, we believe, are fundamentally strong and attractive still. Sven, how confident can you be that we will see a significant rebound in Egypt next year, given that they were already facing some, some economic challenges before all this unrest began this year and then Hosni Mubarak was ousted. But of course, since Hosni Mubarak has left office, uh, these challenges have continued to mount, if not get worse. Unemployment is climbing. There is a serious problem with growth. Industrial production has been hit by strikes. And of course, tourism, a key driver of growth, is really suffering right now. Exactly. Well, I mean, we think all of those issues are why the companies have had pretty bad results at the moment. But a lot of them have been wound up with the fact that Egypt really hasn't had a, a proper functioning government, or it's had a caretaker government rather for the past year. Um, the, the government hasn't been able to put into plans that it, that it can put into place in terms of growth. So we think that, that the slowdown that we've seen is actually a result more of the politi politics rather than anything else. Um, you know, I think it's really summed up for us when we were talking to some local Egyptians who were saying, well, they need ele elections to go ahead, they have to see elections go ahead, but they also need the demonstrations that are happening at the moment to go ahead as well because it's, a, it's not a, um, a process that is mutually exclusive. It's a process that's part of the whole process about moving Egypt forward. Now, we might not see huge improvements in the early parts of next year, but we think by the end of next, part we'll start, next year we'll start to see improvements. Tourism will be probably the slowest part of the economy to come back because people need to feel comfortable before mm -hmm. going there. But we do think that it will all come back, and we think that we will see the results coming through from the companies and we'll see the valuations come through following that. You know, I was speaking, Sven, a little bit earlier on to Angus Blair. He's head of corporate development for Beltone Financial. He's obviously analyzing all these developments. He's based in Cairo. And he was saying that the role and the accountability of the military is going to be an ongoing issue uh, that is going to come back very strongly. It's going to be very much on the agenda next year. Does that affect your thinking? Is that a concern for you when you look at investing in Egypt? I mean, it does affect our thinking, and that's one of the things that we feel need to be resolved, is the exact role of the military, how quickly they will pull out of the civilian government. Um, you know, today is obviously a very important part of the process, but it's not the end of the process, and it's something that we need to see continuing going forward. Um, I don't think that necessarily if, if the military has some sort of role that the uh, people of um, Egypt are happy with, whether that can necessarily harm the economy, but the military needs to be in a position, whatever they are in the future, where most Egyptians are happy with them and where the situation provides growth for the economy. I do think that there's still a lot of decision and discussions to happen as to where the military is going to be and how soon they're going to hand over to the civilian government. And that's something which could delay the return to normalcy in Egypt a bit and could delay our thesis a little bit, but we still think that there's huge opportunities looking ahead for us.
Really good to get your perspective, the investor perspective. Thank you so much. Sven Richter, Head of Frontier Markets at Renaissance Asset Management. Thank you.